for the record, I want to thank Israel, but for the record, I want to say everybody that I normally see Israel wearing a tie, <laughs> but not this afternoon. In a moment, in a moment, we will announce an exciting step forward for our regional innovation ecosystem. But before I do, I'd like to offer a couple of observations about what motivated the effort that brings us together today. As you might expect, MIT's mission, mission statement directs us to advance knowledge and educate students. Yet it also demands more from us. It insists that we bring knowledge to bear on the world's great challenges. In effect, at MIT, it is our duty to bring transformative innovation to the world. Now the US has the best innovation system on the planet. Within that, the greater Boston ecosystem is among the best of the best. This region is a top player at every level. Our universities and hospitals, public and private, attract significant federal funding, turn it into research breakthroughs, and transform those discoveries into powerful new enabling technologies and products. Every year, our colleges and universities educate thousands of outstanding students, and we inspire and prepare many of them to become entrepreneurs. And in fact, quite a few of them are in this room tonight. As one point of reference, we estimate that in Massachusetts alone, leading MIT entrepreneurs have founded 7,000 active companies. And Kendall Square is currently home to more than 1,000 startups in the field from biotech to robotics to energy. And it's not just about startups. From GE and IBM to Novartis and Biogen, the region is packed with major corporate players delivering innovative solutions to the world. Of course, the whole system depends on the vital support of the venture capital community. And we're also fortunate to receive encouragement from government at every level, from City Hall to the State House to Washington. It's a wonderful story and a wonderful reality, but over the last decade, and especially since 2012, when I became MIT's president, we have come to perceive one area, one area of missed opportunity. It would show up in many different contexts. For example, in an email from an MIT professor whose new scientific discovery enabled a brilliant new approach to grid-scale energy storage but who finds the path to commercialization stretching out beyond the typical five-year time frame of venture capital. Or when I heard a spine-stingling presentation from a faculty member working on a serious strategy to treat Alzheimer's, only to hear afterwards that they could not get the support to make it real. So the idea is stuck in the lab. Another innovator expressed the same frustration about a radically easy and inexpensive method to test for the Zika virus. In fact, the Boston Globe recently published a survey of 100 early stage founders. 75% said that founding their enterprise in Greater Boston has made their company stronger. But 77% said that for companies like theirs, the most serious barrier to entering the market is access to capital. And the challenges are not only about money. Many startups are torn between needing to tap the talent and expertise at the heart of an innovation district and the struggle to pay $70 a square foot for the privilege. For some firms, it's also about equipment. A faculty entrepreneur recently observed that for most tough tech startups, their first 18 months and their first $3 million are spent replicating the facilities they had at a place like MIT. 
In effect, we keep seeing that in fields like energy, manufacturing, robotics, biotech, medical devices, innovators are finding it extremely difficult to secure the stable funding, space, equipment, expertise, and networks to fully develop their technologies. Too often, these tough tech entrepreneurs can never find sufficient support, which discourages others from trying, a dynamic that leaves many promising ideas stranded in the lab. This is more than a matter of disappointed individuals because many of them are working on solutions to humanity's most important problems. So if they cannot get their ideas to market, society loses as well. We looked at this challenge for our innovators and our ecosystem, and we saw a clear path to make a difference. So now to introduce our solution, let us show you a brief video. In Massachusetts, we know a thing or two about revolutionary ideas. And at MIT, we know a thing or two about innovation and entrepreneurship. Together, the universities, communities, and industries of Greater Boston have transformed this region into one of the hottest innovation ecosystems on the planet. A place that's home to everything from the most dynamic and forward-thinking companies to the startups nipping at their heels. But we and other innovators in the area got to thinking, what if we could go further? What if we could cut the time it takes for world-changing ideas to go from lab bench to marketplace, help entrepreneurs find support to take on the most difficult challenges, accelerate growth in the toughest technologies to tackle the toughest problems? What could we build to make this a reality? We build an accelerator to help ambitious startups get from concept to company and from prototype to production. We provide financial support for innovations that require long lead times to develop. And we'd establish a network linking the ecosystems of Cambridge, Boston, and beyond to share vital equipment, makerspace, and diverse talent. We'd rally our colleagues across the region and together make more than financial commitments. We would make a pledge to use our energies, our brains, and our skills to push the boundaries of the possible. We would build a new kind of accelerator, one as tough as the technologies it will drive, as revolutionary as the ideas it will support. To do all this, we would build an engine. So here is the idea. Today, as you just saw, MIT is launching a separate entity called the Engine. From its headquarters right here at 501 Masaf, the Engine will support tough tech firms working on big societal problems by providing a distinctive package of resources, patient capital, affordable local space, access to highly specialized equipment, streamlined legal and business services, and expertise from prototype to scale up. The engine will also connect them with a network of MIT alumni, like-minded entrepreneurs, and major corporations in other innovation nodes, near and far. What truly sets the engine apart is the emphasis on impact. In assessing candidate companies, it will prioritize breakthrough answers to big questions and to big problems over early profit. Our opening commitment is serious. 26,000 square feet and $25 million. And it will expand in both dimensions. 
non-trivially were also investing MIT's reputation. During steady state operation, we hope the engine will serve 60 startups per year. To magnify the impact, MIT will seek to attract hundreds of millions of dollars in additional support and to enable hundreds of thousands of square feet of space for entrepreneurs in Kendall Square and nearby communities. The benefits from the engine will flow not only to local startups, but to the regional innovation ecosystem and ultimately to so society as a whole. By giving entrepreneurs a systematic way to develop and commercialize here, close to the mothership, tough technologies that were invented here, we can shorten the time it takes them to get VC ready. And once the community is aware of these resources, we believe that many more innovators will gain the confidence to bring their boldest, most important ideas out of their lab. If you think the engine might be a fit for your own company, please go and check the website and let us know. The engine will also benefit the greater Boston ecosystem by accelerating its success. By helping tough tech companies develop until they are ready for venture capital, it will naturally complement the strength of the VC community. And by building a new excitement about how entrepreneurship can deliver world-changing impact, the engine will foster new investment, attract fresh talent, retain thriving companies, and help the region establish a self-renewing model of growth, reinvention, and success. And for the nation and the world, the potential benefits are impossible to calculate. When it comes to the most important problems humanity needs to solve, climate change, clean energy, fresh water and food for the world, cancer, autism, Alzheimer's, infectious disease, well, there is no up for that. We believe the engine will help deliver important answers for addressing such intractable problems, answers that otherwise might never leave the lab. Because many of these solutions depend on tangible technologies, we also have high hopes that they will ultimately produce not only new companies, but new industries, new forms of manufacturing, and new jobs. And we can truly, if we can truly make the engine hum, we hope it might become a model that would be useful to other ecosystems as well. At MIT, we like to keep our eyes on the horizon, and we love the race to get there. Today, to reach the horizon of new solutions even faster, we're starting the engine. But we will only get there with your help. So we hope you will join us for the ride. Somehow, my notes here says, wait for applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I had to call for it. Before, <laughs> before we move on, move on to our truly amazing panel, I'd like to acknowledge the people who made today possible. Developing the engine took the insight and hard work of many creative thinkers and doers inside and outside MIT. The team had a remarkable leader. MIT's Executive Vice President and Treasurer, Israel Ruiz. And I want to thank Israel publicly for the exceptional vision and leadership that took to build the engine. Without him, we would not be here today. Israel, thank you. In this effort, Israel worked closely with MIT Provost, Marty Schmidt, who brought invaluable expertise from his work inside multiple tough tech startups. 
It was Ananta Chandakasan, head of our Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, who was an inspiring thought partner and helped build crucial support. To them, and to everyone involved in making this dream come true, I offer my most sincere thank you. And now, this is really the moment I was waiting for. It's my great pleasure to introduce the moderator of today's panel, Joy Ito. As director of the MIT Media Lab, Joy is a legend. You look at him right now. <laughs> an entrepreneur, a venture capitalist, an advocate for privacy and internet freedom, and a visionary thinker. He's currently exploring how radical new approaches to science and technology can transform society. He also provided wonderful insight as we refine the engine concept. Since Joy's schedule sometimes includes items like interview with President Obama, we're very grateful that he could be with us here today. Please join me in welcoming Joy Eaton. <laughs> 